Hey, it's Ran Stern again with the final part of the 3D watch animation. And in this part, we will finish to animate the watch handles, and then we will add some more interesting elements to our background animation. It will be fun, so let's begin. Okay, so this is where we left off on the second part, and now we want to reveal the layers with the watch animation handles that we did. I will close the eye for the full render layer, I will select the wireframe layer and make it active. And we're going to use a very simple effect in order to reveal the layers with the animation of the watch hands that we already have. I will go into the effects and preset panel and I will start to write the letters R A D I which will reveal under transition the radial wipe effect which we will use in order to reveal each one of the layers. So select the effect and drag it on top of the wireframe layer. Now let's expand it a little bit so we can see it better and this radial wipe is basically doing exactly what we need because it is using a radial wipe in order to reveal the layer. We will only need to adjust it to our design. So first make sure that you hold the wipe center and just drag it to the center on top of our watch hands hub. Now we need to make sure that the angle, the start angle for this watch is correct. So I'm going to play with it a little bit and it should look something like, I would guess, around 25 degrees. So this looks better, and if we will use the transition completion, we will see that we are getting somewhere. The only problem is that we are going the wrong direction. So in the wipe pull-down menu, change it to counterclockwise, which of course doesn't make any sense because we are walking clockwise and this effect wants to be counterclockwise, but for my opinion the real spooky part is that this effect knows that we are animating a watch. It tells us clockwise and counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. Very nice After Effects, you are indeed a clever software. Okay, enough fooling around, let's continue with our mission. So at uh, zero seconds we will place a keyframe in transition completion, make sure it is 100%. And now we will go to one second in the timeline and we will change the transition completion to 0%. So now you should have an animation that follows your hands. And because we did it like one revolution each second, it follows it quite nicely and quite correctly, though at 100% we can see that we are not dead center, we are not completely accurate. And this is of course due to the wipe center point and of course to the fact that we are walking in some way of perspective and this radial wipe is not. So you can again try to eyeball it or even better just give it a little bit of a feather. I will say around 10 should look nice if you do a RAM preview because remember it is in motion so it will look convincing while it's moving. Now guys it is the easy part. All we need to do now is just copy all of our radial wipe animation and properties to the layer above it. So I will select the wireframe layer and I will open it and open also the effects for it and make sure that I will see all of my radial wipe properties and then you can just marquee everything because we need to make sure that we are copying everything the transition completion, the start angle, wipe center, wipe direction and feather everything should come from this layer to the layer above it so now go into edit and make sure you copy all the information go into one second in your timeline you can close now this layer and now I will make sure the illustration layer is active and I can see it and I'm going to go to edit and paste all of the information. So if I did it correctly now we should get an animation which is similar to the one that we did on the wireframe layer for the illustration. So both of the layers should look something like this. First the wireframe and then the wipe will reveal 
the illustration layer. But I think that we should increase the feather amount to something very high. I would say around 100. Using a high value like this will merge the layer very nicely together and if we will zoom in we will see that it is looking very much realistic like we are really revealing the heart of the clock. Now I will repeat the same procedure for the remaining two layers again. I will paste the same information for the shaded and for the full render layer at 3 seconds and in 4 seconds in the timeline. Now we can start to see the result and we can see that the layer reveals themselves and the watch is moving from one mode to another. I think that the shaded layer looks a little bit pale so I will add a curve adjustment to it. Playing with the curve I think that we can easily match this layer, yes this is much better, to the layers on top and in front of it. So now we can close down all of the effects, come back to the project panel, select the composition view, hit tilde, and let's do a RAM preview to see what we have here. And this is our 3D watch revealing itself, which came out pretty nice. So now we need to finalize it with our last design. Okay, I will return to the full interface and now of course we have our final watch animation which we can use it as a pre-comp which means that we can take this comp and put it inside another comp. So you can go to composition, new composition or even better just press the make new composition button and it will call up the same dialog. So from here we will choose a preset. Now I'm choosing PAL because I'm working in Israel. You of course can choose NTSC or whatever fits you. And I will rename this composition by the famous known name in After Effects, Final. I will drag the Rolex comp that we just finalized and place it into the final comp. And let's just scrub it because it is so beautiful so we can look at it once again. It's a bit big for us because we worked in Photoshop in 1024 by 1024 so let's just do some scale animation. We can start from around 76% at the first keyframe and then around 5 seconds we will change it back to 100%. I think it is contributing to the animation because the watch is not just sitting there, it is coming towards us. Because we have those pixels, it will be just a waste not to use them. Don't you agree? I know you do. Okay, let me just look at it a little bit and I think that, yes, if we take a closer look, I think that this layer can use some improvement. So let's just select the Rolex composition, the Rolex layer once again, and we will make a glow effect on it. So we will duplicate it using Ctrl D or Command D in Mac and we will name the upper layer glow. Now I'm going to highlight the effect and presets and just write blur. Using the fast blur I will drag the fast blur and change the blurriness to a value of 15. Now this blurs completely the upper layer so we need to take care of the blending mode. I will change it to the add mode that does a good job but it's a little bit too much for my test. So you can use shift and plus in your keyboard until you find something that looks good in your eyes. And I think that I will stay with screen. But again, it's a little bit too drastic. So we'll hit T and just change the opacity to 20% and let's check the other modes. For example, here in the illustration mode, it doesn't really do anything. So maybe we'll increase it to around, I think that 50% will be nice value for everything. So we'll zoom back and we will close the glow layer and now finally we will create the background. You can go to the animation menu and from there select browse presets. This will launch the bridge and now we can see all the presets that shipped with After Effects. I will double click the background folder and here you can see all of them and of course you can play with them and check what they are doing. There is a little preview here but I will go with the last one. It's called sweeping curves and the colors are actually very similar to the colors that Rolex watch 
are using in their design. So I'll double click it and since there were no selected layers in After Effects timeline, this preset will create for us a solid layer and place on it all of the necessary effect in order to create this wonderful animation preset that we just saw in the bridge. Now we need to extend the animation a little bit. So select the layer, hit the letter U in the keyboard and just drag the last keyframes until the end of the timeline. Now you can take the solid four layer and just place it underneath our Rolex and Glow layers. So it definitely looks good together, this background that we did automatically and our glowing watch. And now we can return to the back layer that we prepared in Photoshop. Remember that we prepared a back layer which we can use now in order to fill the background a little bit. So let's just drill down the Rolex layers folders and this is the back layer. Make sure you are on the first frame of the animation and drag the back Rolex between solid 4 and the Rolex layer. We will use this still frame in order to fill up the background and just to give it a little bit of a high tech look to our animation. So let's zoom out and we will need to just use a couple of manual adjustment here in order to make things work for us. So I'll change the anchor point of this layer to be at the right end and then we will use some scale adjustment. At the first frame we will scale it to be a little bit smaller and on the last frame we will scale it I think until somewhere around 90%. So it will flow with our watch animation. Over here as well I will change the blend mode to add which really shines this layer on the background and I think it gives it a very uh, gold look which suits our need. And again let's decrease the opacity to around 60% so it will be merged into the background and not fill it too much. Okay lovely, let's close it down now. Now I see a minor problem here, in the first frame we see the hands of the watch and we don't really want to see them so I will use the opacity in order to make sure that the watch will not be visible or at least as less as visible as possible in the couple of the first frames of the animation. So just uh, do a tiny animation of let's say 0 and on the 10th frame place it to 100 so it will just fade in better in the beginning of the composition. So we are finally at the last stage of the animation. If you like you can open this logo elements comp that I already pre-made for you so you can examine it and of course I made a copy with an English text here but this is using my original design so it says eternal watch in Hebrew and there are a couple of effects here there is a lens flare effect on the logo of the Rolex and some simple text animation that we can use and we will just drag these logo elements and just make sure that we will snap it to the end of the timeline and also let's make sure that collapse transformation is checked on so we will be able to use all of its blend modes. So now I can see that the Glow and Rolex layers are blocking my text so we can select both of them and just nudge the layers a little bit to the left in order that Harmony will return to our composition and all of the layers will be living happily side by side. Last thing that I want to do is make use of a new feature in CS3 which is layer styles. So let's select the Rolex layer and add to it an outer glow effect. I will open up the outer glow effect and use the color picker to select some nice green color from our background. You also want to consider to change the size of the effect. So let's just pan down and we will change the size from 5 to something very high, maybe 70 or even 100. We only need to make sure that it will be synchronized with the logo elements that we did. So let's just change our zoom value and change the opacity back to somewhere around the 44%. It's looking very nice right now. And just scrub to the point where the lens flare is highlighting the Rolex logo. And now we will 
add a keyframe to the opacity of the outer glow and just as soon as this lens flare on the Rolex logo is highlighting we want to highlight our watch at the same time so we will make sure it's following more or less the same timing of the logo elements pre-compose animation and basically I think that we did it very nicely so it looks very very good so let's close everything and believe it or not we are there we are at the final stage of the exercise so moving to a full screen and we will do a final RAM preview to check the result to see if our 3D watch animation is indeed prestigious and exclusive as we think it is. So guys, do you believe it? I think we managed to do it. We didn't do any work in a 3D package. All here was done using Photoshop and After Effects and some nice animation using the shape tools. And I really hope that you can take a couple of good ideas from what we have done here together and implement them on your own 3D watch animation. I hope you learned something and until next time, this is Erran Stern saying goodbye.